Welcome back to another episode of the Sit Down Talk. My name is Kier. And I'm Noemi. And we welcome you. Clap it up for you for being up in this joint. Being up in the house tonight. This is like the third time we shot at night, I really right? like the nighttime. Yeah, it's a different On vibe. On days that aren't, I mean, today was a busy day, but I had a lot of help. So it, it felt like I got a lot done, but I'm not drained. I'm That's the most like, important thing. I don't like coming here tired. I like coming yeah, here full of energy. Same. Because our same. people come here full of energy for us, and we got to get them that back. Amen. You look great in white. You know, I like white, man. It's a nice little contrast. It's something, about, something. It's something about white against his skin. Like, you look real. And, and you got a haircut today. I oh, mean, you know this. <laughs> you know this. I like it good. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's um, I'm becoming more of like a cream, neutral, off white kind of dude. He used to wear bright colors all the time, Man. and there's nothing wrong with bright colors. Nah, not at all. But I'm a neutral girl, and it's just something about like you, like you had this like brown sweatshirt. It was like a chocolatey brown. I still got that joint. Oh, it looks so good on you. Yeah, I got like, that joint from Zara. You from look, sale. you look great in neutrals, and especially in white. You look amazing in white. I'm start especially when you're in Turks and Caicos, and you wear the little fashion over thing that I sent you. Oh yeah, the white joint. You keep saying offensive things about it, <laughs> but you look so good. Oh, I said what? You just complained about it the whole time. What like, the fashion over joint? Yeah, it like wasn't every a chi- com- it <laughs> wasn't a complaint. You like. This joint is real cheap. If it was cold outside, I'd be. It like, was the cheap material. The wind was blowing, and I felt warm and fine. I'm just <laughs> okay. <laughs> what well, am I missing? Never mind. This episode is not about fashion over outfits on vacation. This episode is about something different. Do you want to intro that thing? Um. Yes, but let's give a round of applause real hmm. quick for those of us, um, those of y'all listening. On the podcast. Oh, yeah. Shout we out didn't to the mention that the sit down talk is officially on all podcast platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, just look up either the sit down talk or Kieran Noemi Gaines. We should pop up in one of those searches. Mm-hmm. Um, just an FYI, it's not all of our episodes. Um, if you want to see our older episodes, they are still on YouTube and those are vlogs, video blogs, or whatever you want to call them. Um, but the podcast, this new season, I believe this is one of the first, within the first five episodes. Um, but we have those up. Yeah, this will be the third podcasts. episode on the podcast, I think. Whatever. It's new. It's just a couple of them up there, but stay tuned. We'll be uploading on a consistent basis. And this will just be another chance for us to reach out to more people. So I'm yeah, excited. I'm excited. I think but we had 2,000 downloads or something like that already. Something so. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We doing all right, man. This week's topic is kind of serious, but we're going to try to make it as fun and interesting as possible. But it's something that we just got to talk about. And it's about assuming positive intent in your relationship. Hard. <laughs> Difficult level. Difficulty level insane. Yes, man. definitely it's high up there. Um, but doable. But doable. But so doable. for those of you that are like, hmm, that sounds familiar, but I don't know what you're talking about. It's probably because you work in corporate America and mm. you probably had to take some HR or whatever workplace relationships course on assuming positive intent a lot of it is just with assuming positive intent with your co-workers who might say something crazy to you and your manager is usually going to say that to you like on a team we have to assume positive intent because it has all of these great benefits on a corporate team and unfortunately it also does in relationships so we're going to have to bring some of that corporate knowledge and corporate thinking into our relationships um so yeah that's where assume positive intent kind of comes in that sounds nasty on the surface because you when you think corporate you just think nastiness you think yeah. of people clawing to climb on top of each other per my last mm-hmm. email passive aggression have to pretend that this person talking about their weekend is interesting and the whole oh yeah you know using your work voice but when the we, high inflections at the end of your sentence because the thing we have to do is we have to get more synergy and oh not synergy oh Oh, synergy. And I hate that and word. Ethos. Oh, the ethos. It's the ethos of our organization. Uh not that part of corporate America, but I do think that the reason so many companies are largely successful is that corporate America does a good job of building foundations and language and community that works within the ecosystem Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is another (laughs) word they use all the time Mm -hmm. but it does work it's effective and it works for helping people who have similar attainments 
um, all work toward a common goal, which is in essence what a relationship is. That sound is so corporate. Let's. I had a lot of training. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Okay. A lot of student loan debt. And I know, like, it sounding like that can be a turnoff, but I promise y'all, we're gonna we're gonna break it down and explain to you how we yeah. kind of got there. Yeah. We're gonna make it helpful though. So it's not like when we came into this relationship, we're like, you know what? One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna assume positive intent. Hell no. Nah. It, it really didn't come through I've like that. I've never said anything like that. <laughs> and even like no joke, when we were preparing for this conversation, he was like, assume positive intent. Yeah. And I'm like, but you do it. He was like, I do. I was like okay and it was like come up with an example and he was like all right well i might need a second like i don't know um i promise it's something that you've thought about <laughs> why you make my voice sound doing. like that i always do that i always make it like stupid man no, 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 no. <laughs> do i do a joint for you yes <laughs> what am I doing? because like this and then and like you're just <laughs> You always use your hands and like. Maybe we have an itinerary. You see, you see, to, see, see, see. Have, have to do. No, you thing. don't do that for me. I, don't, <laughs> I I'm not here. I guys. can't record at night. I'm. Hey, be serious. But, I'm, you know what? I'm, you know what? It's serious, but I need to make it fun because it's feeling mad corporate. Oh nah. Hey, listen. This was me in corporate America. Like I come to the table and everybody all serious. I'm like, man, y'all are real stiff. I'm I'm going to be myself. I'm trying to not be stiff. Nah, you're trying not. to not be stiff. Okay, let me just tell you where this came from because y'all are probably like, girl, what are you talking about? Okay, fine. Get to the point. <laughs> Assuming positive intent came from corporate. Aside from like the legal work that I used to do, I did a lot of like workplace relationship guides for mm. lawyers because. Lawyers are not fun. We don't know how to talk to people. Workplace relationships typically suck. Or you architects. Know? You know? Oh, yeah. Lawyers, absolutely. architects, sometimes um, engineers, usually. Oh, absolutely. Very tough. Abs and accountants. And accountants, yeah. Those technical, yeah. skilled mm -hmm, jobs. Mm -hmm. Usually the, the bedside manner exactly. isn't, isn't a priority. There. Because that's that's a, that's not something to be considered. It's yeah. very black and white. It is or it isn't. You know, mm -hmm. um, It's not a well-decorated in that way. It doesn't leave room for that type of creativity. Um, but I created a lot of content um, around that. A lot of articles, blogs, things of that sort. And assume positive intent is something that happened often. And especially within our team, whenever there were issues, that's the main thing that our manager always said. Assume positive intent both ways. Whether it's with your colleagues, whether it's with a colleague specifically that you might have issues with. You know what I mean? It's just this culture that they dig into you. And I recognize that it was something that was really difficult for me to do in my relationship with Kier. And... Like once we kind of talked through those issues, got to the bottom of it, I realized, you know, assuming positive intent with, in addition to a lot of the other things that you hear on corporate are things to be inserted into your relationship. It just works. For me, when I hear assume positive intent, before we jump into it, I think about how it doesn't work. Yeah. Because assuming- And it didn't work for us. <laughs> it, it, it didn't, it doesn't work for a lot of people mm -hmm. because on one side, assuming positive intent means that you have to put into your mind that what this person is saying is not meant to be destructive or harmful or interfering or disruptive it it may be invalidating yeah you know, and, that's a, that's invalidating is a huge yep. one belittling mm -hmm. like the the intent isn't to make you feel that way but there's something else in that message that is making you feel that way mm -hmm. but that is not what the intent is the the problem is one sometimes intent doesn't matter when feelings are hurt mm -hmm. does it some of the worst things that have ever happened to people took off as good intentions and landed as mm -hmm. trauma inducing yeah. actions so uh there's that and two you know the person on the other side doesn't always have positive intent for mm -hmm. you so at what point are you assuming something that doesn't exist mm -hmm. And allowing a person to treat you a way that is unfair, which can also happen in your relationship. So it's it's not like a blind, hey, always assume positive intent. That's not what we're saying here. Mm -hmm. We're saying that within the confines of a relationship, it's really important to assume positive intent. But it's also very important for that other person to give you enough evidence to know that the positive intent is actually mm -hmm. there. You you can't just assume something that does not exist. I think that's a recipe for a relationship that's gonna crash and burn really Absolutely. hard. So just that little bit of clarity before mm -hmm. we jump in, I, I felt like that was important. And I just wanna add, and just something to consider before we kinda like really dive deep into the concept is, like the reason why this is important 
Like what Kira said, absolutely right. You have to be able to decipher like whether this is a situation where you are being smart and assuming positive intent. But the goal is to get to a relationship where you can do that. Mm. If those questions, you know what I mean? Like the goal, there yeah. is no harm in working on your relationship so that you are comfortable. And it is a true reflection, I guess, true reflection of where you are in your relationship. If you are in a place where both parties are able to do that, that's a good sign. Yeah. So that that's where we're trying to drive yeah. it home. Or at least grow the capacity to be able to walk in that direction. That Be Because that we're, part. we're still working on a positive intent. It's not perfect. But whenever you sit here and talking to us, like divorce yourself from the idea of perfection. Yeah, please. If there's a 10 out of, like nobody is going to get an A plus in this class. It ain't that. It ain't that. Sometimes you'll, you'll see minus, you pass. Yeah. That's plenty and that's good what you enough. Need to move on. <laughs> you, you know you what I mean? Pass. That means you can move on. That means you can move if you on. So <laughs> you can build on top of it. You yep. can go back and reference it. Mm -hmm. You can it can it can hold space in your relationship yeah. without weighing it down. You show that you are competent enough in this particular category to move on to the next level. Yeah. You don't have to be number one. You nah. just gotta make it through. Yeah, you don't have to intentions. win a relationship. There's no yeah. winning a relationship. It's say that one more time, please. When people ask me that, do you really mean say it again, or is yes. it one of them? Tell them for the people in the back. No. Say it louder. No, because I think I mean that's a whole nother oh, episode. Shit. What I said. Winning. You said it's not about winning. You can't win in a relationship. Yeah, you can't win a relationship. It's a lot of competition in relationships about who's the better partner, I who know. makes the more sacrifices. It's not. That's not. Or even within a relationship itself, boo. There's times when people are trying to win against other couples we've been oh, to dinner man. with couples and they trying to out couple us and it's like oh shit they don't know we don't care yeah just know we see like you, <laughs> and you we talked it. about it on the way home <laughs> <laughs> like yeah oh we think about going on vacation ne next week oh yeah we think about going on vacation tomorrow like, oh okay. well, let's go fun. yeah we we going. Going. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't you can't try to impress somebody no. who doesn't care. No. It's it's very hard. I feel like I saw you Google what this positive intent mean. Well, I didn't. <laughs> Don't play with me like that. <laughs> no, but I remember looking at the definition and thinking at the time, like, oh, that's a good definition. So can you go back and paraphrase for the people in the back who's like girl i still don't know what you're talking about well i looked up good intentions mm -hmm. i found this article on psychology today um about looking for good intentions and it came up with three sub points okay uh the three sub points were be aware and feel warm by human kindness and buoyed by good intentions uh the second point is the brain's innate negativity bias continually scans for bad news and bad intentions mm. which is absolutely true negativity bias is a for sure. beast Ooh, so yeah. is a recency bias what's a oh because a situation that happened recently yeah you what, your brain cleaves to the most recent situation so there's a lot of different recency bias but in in terms of relationships, recency bias will look like if for the last four months, whatever the thing you do that royally like hurts my feelings or pisses me off, if you haven't done it, but in the last two days you've done it twice, my brain... Makes it seem like you've been doing it the whole time. It gives more weight to the most uh, recent thing that happened. Yeah, and our brains are wired for negativity. That's why that's why negative content resonates so well. That's why it gets so much so many uh hits. That's why the news will after a good story, they'll be like, After the break, forty five people die in a tragic accident, learn how. Mm -hmm. What? And then you sit through the commercial break and then you're gonna learn how all those people died <laughs> oh because God. that's what we do. And the third thing is seeing good intentions amidst bad behaviors can help you feel less affected less stressed less irritated and less worried by other people and that's the one that stuck out to me right there the most uh seeing good int intentions and amidst bad behaviors i feel like that can go more what are than these one three way. things again these are just key points that he that he's talking about in the article when it's looking for good intentions oh, so, so i like, think the, okay how to look for good intentions. yeah the Got preface you. of his entire thing is seek good intentions and open yourself up to be aware of them and there's a larger likelihood that you will accept them as what's going on with you in the moment can I clarify something or pose a question? Yeah, yeah. So I remember just in my research, like seeking good intentions and assuming positive 
intentions are a little bit different. Oh, what's and the I think it's in the verb, the seeking and the assuming. Seeking is to like find something. Mm. Assuming that usually happens in the midst of like a conflict or a misunderstanding when the actions and the words are telling my brain that this is like a mayday situation. But me knowing the relationship that I have with that person, overriding those emotions and assuming that there is positive intent, despite what my body is telling me Ooh, that it is. I, I, I know that can get tricky. Mm -hmm. We talk. I know we talk a lot about couples posting and then humiliating each other online. But I know that can get tricky when you have a situation where you've told someone what your needs are or what you're comfortable with. A great example with us is clothes in the middle of the floor or missing a hamper or something like that, which is a me thing. In your mind, you're like, yo, I, I've said this before. I've been talking about this for years. If you wanted to, you would. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanted to change these things, you would. You're not because you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the assuming positive intent comes in. That's Am I right? That's perfect. I assuming bet. positive that's what I intent. And so, assuming positive intent is he doesn't care about the clothes. He doesn't. It's not a personal thing against me. If he's not doing it, it's because he can't get to it, not because he doesn't care that it's important to me. That's what assuming positive intent is. How is do, not making it personal. How does that differ from what your mindset was before? What was your mindset before? If that's the positive intent side, what was it before? That I asked him to do it and he doesn't care. So he doesn't care that this affects me. Okay. And that's the bottom joint. That's he the doesn't bottom care thing. that he doesn't, it he doesn't, me. I've told him multiple times to do it and he still doesn't do it. I told him that it bothered me and he still doesn't do it. If he still doesn't do it and he knows it bothers me, then he doesn't care. He doesn't care that this bothers me. Oh, there's somebody listening to this who wants yeah. to punch me in the face so bad right but now. But assume positive intent means I'm basing my assumption on what I know about my relationship with this person versus what the actions and words say. The actions and words say he doesn't care. My relationship with you says it's not something that bothers him. He's aware that it bothers me. And he's just working on on finding a way to make that work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's taking that like it's not he's not doing it to hurt me. It does hurt me. We we've talked about that. We've we've accepted it. Whatever. We know that that's the case. But he's not doing it on purpose to hurt me. You said something that's important. You said find a way to make it work. And I think that's true for our relationship. Is it perfect now? Nah. My my closet compared to hers is still a mess. But. It's not the same issue we had a couple yeah. of years ago, and not it has improved, but there's a time thing. There's a time, a patience, and a necessity thing. Mm -hmm. When something bothers you, especially like clutter bothers you, mm -hmm. there's a necessity button in your brain that just get hit. Like, this needs to be fixed now. I'm not comfortable. This ain't how I rock. These ain't my standards. Yep. This ain't it. It needs to be changed now. And that was my reaction. Would you agree? It was, yeah. and I and I, I don't think that's illogical. I feel like that's a logical train of thought. But the, it's not conducive to partnership in a relationship. Because you're not the only person in a relationship, exactly. so it's, it's two part. Yeah. And, it's, and I hope I'm not tripping over how we're going to move through this drink, because I know you got some good points. But on one side, yeah, it's that's just it's not conducive. No one's going to do what you want them to do, how you want them to do it, when you want them to do it in the amount of time that you think it should be take to be done but on the other side because that's not something that's native to you or that's not something that you prioritize as much as your partner does it doesn't mean you can just completely ignore and not try to get better at that thing mm -hmm. so one person has to develop expectations that give enough room for grace for change over a long period of time because humans take a mm -hmm. long time to change and on the other side the person who is you know, committing the clothes on the floor, the heinous clothes act. offenses, <laughs> <laughs> that part, the clutter offenses. You 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 have to work continuously to just be. I'm not even gonna say better, but be different with it. Find a system that works mm -hmm. for you. Maybe try different ways of going. Maybe the ham hamper, or maybe I can just throw all this shit in the closet and shut the door. Like it's just about finding ways that mm -hmm. works for the way that your brain operates. That's why partnership is so hard, yep. dog. Yep. It's two people juggling on a unicycle with a blindfold at the same time. It's just such a ridiculous balance in that. 
Um, can I offer a practical example? Because I feel like a lot of people are probably looking at this, but like, since how are you okay? Like, because I don't like clutter either. How did you? Yeah. <laughs> like, what did it look like? And right, I go think ahead. give it to them. Um, when you were talking about like it takes effort on the person making the clutter offenses, a few things that Care kind of does that help me get to a place where I would say when it comes to the clothes for the most part I think I assume positive intent all the time like I don't think I've really been tripping on you you know if it does get crazy I'd be like babe we gotta do something about it mm-hmm. am I okay to say that like I haven't like flipped out on you about like clothes lately what you mean when you say you okay to say it is it true for me to say oh that you haven't flipped yeah. out on me about yeah, clothes yeah 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 absolutely because I feel like I've been better about like just going psycho about it yeah, I just I know you better, so I can read the cues, and I'm like, ah, oh, my shit and everywhere. Let me and go pick some And that's where I'm about up. to go to it. I feel like with me assuming positive intent, because my body, face, and reactions will show that I'm frustrated. One of the things that Kier has done as a result of me assuming positive intent is he also gives me the room to vent. So instead of like their clothes everywhere, you don't pick up your shit and I'm mad. It's like, damn, babe, I feel like the house is, you know, getting a lot of clutter and I feel out of it. Can we schedule a day? Like, assuming positive intent takes the blame away from him. And now I'm able to talk to him about an issue that's not focused on him. Now that he knows it's not focused on him, he's in a better position to want to help. Because you don't have your fight or flight response. Yeah, because I don't, it's I don't not feel like you. I need to defend myself right. the same way. And even though we're using this example of me being the person that is the culprit of of the thing that happened like this for one it's not just one thing we mm-hmm. have many of these things in our relationship where she has not a problem i hate to say it like that but eh, sit down talk where she has a problem with the way that i do it and then in inverse i have things we have a problem with the way that she does it we both battle with this thing in different categories together so it's not just a one-sided affair it's usually both partners have different things that they can highlight in this whole thing were you feeling like you were attacked or something? Nah, 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 nah. It's just, I just want to make it clear that it's not a one-sided thing. Because every time I hear this, it's like the person who will be in your position, they don't always understand that it's, like, even though they have a problem with the way their partner does these things, like, the partner also has a problem with the way that they do certain things. And it's just understanding that you both are in that position just gives more room for grace mm. on okay. each side for me. Is there a time when I had to assume positive... Do you feel like you assume positive intent with me? Yeah. Do you feel like you always have? No. So when did that change? I think, man, it keeps going back to me knowing you more. I got to see you in similar situations that don't have anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. So I can pick up a pattern of just how you operate. Like if you have a similar beef with a friend, how Mm -hmm. you maneuver through that. If you have a similar beef with a family member. Yeah, you know me well. Yeah. Well, okay, I have a better example. I mean, a better question. So tell me about a time where you assumed a negative intent and you were wrong i be assuming you have an attitude sometimes you don't it kind of just happened i thought you had an attitude yeah but you know that i'm just i'm just really direct like Uh, i i skip the place where (laughs) just my brain skips the place of giving people social cues in my mind like i don't have to give you social (laughs) like you know what i mean like i don't i just feel like that is such a fake way it's kind of like the you walking down the street and you see somebody and you're like, you know, and it's like, we all do it. But like in my most intimate relationships, like that's where I feel like I don't have to. So mm. it comes across as very um, blank sometimes, but it's just like, I'm a faking this shit all day. Like I'm, I have nothing to give <laughs> at this point. Hey, that's, that's. <laughs> and I feel safe with you. So I feel comfortable not having to fluff that's legit you're the only person in the world that i can do that with that's that's legit the only (laughs) problem is when there ain't no social cues to pick up on you kind of left to wonder that's why i just asked you like it's really not on purpose it's just but i know this now yeah i did not know this year one year two year three year four now i know this year (laughs) four but around year three (laughs) when we was really struggling it was me trying to figure out that little piece you just thought i was a cold face killer I just I couldn't understand. It felt like if I made a joke on Monday, you'd be like, "Ha, ah, that's funny." If I made a joke on Tuesday, that same joke, you would be like, "I don't get it." And if I made that same joke on Thursday, on any Thursday, any of these days, you'd be like, "That's offensive." I cannot believe you just said that. Cuz jokes aren't funny every day. You know, <laughs> like but think about think about some of the jokes. Like they're not always funny considering what else is happening. 
like in the world, in my life. Like shit could have been funny on Monday. But then the shit happened to me on Tuesday, and it's not funny anymore on Wednesday. I hear you. I just I ain't got no LCD screen to give me a read, and I never know what I'm flying yeah. into. So I, don't, I I ask questions because I don't want to assume and be wrong. Positive so yeah, do you intent. have an example of when, or is that it that I just have an attitude? <laughs> I don't. That's so plain. <laughs> I want it to be an example of like when you assumed a negative intent, it turned into an issue, and you were wrong because if you were to assume positive intent, it wouldn't have been an issue. You know people trying to point out the time when they were wrong is hard. I never really felt like you were trying to like you were out to get me or anything like that. Or you think I of an example. I don't know if I ever felt like your intentions were bad. Give it to me. Oof. It's still tender. Oh god. You love bringing up the tenders. <laughs> well, I mean, we're digging deep in the relationship nah, let's, so let's the deep do stuff. It. It's um Let's do it. You sure? Yeah, what you got? So it's it stems from pregnancy, the first pregnancy with E. And when you were kind of like struggling with the news and how it would affect your life, and you just assumed that I was making decisions without you in mind. Like it just, you just assumed very like oh, selfish yeah. thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Damn, you were that's wrong. A, that's a good example. You I know? was dead wrong. You were wrong. And I feel like if we were to have, if, a real conversation back then about how we both were feeling and what considerations I had and the things that I was like thinking about that that would have solved a lot of like the years long issue. I mean, we're, we're good now, but it took years to get over that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not just because of time, but because we had to have a lot of conversations, work through some things. There were some negative assumptions on your part about me and where I stood about those, you know, decisions. So like, that's the biggest example that stands out to me. Nah, I think you 100% right. I think you want to talk I, about that a little bit? Yeah. Like where you were? I assume that you really just did not care about me or my well-being at all. I assume that you didn't care about my future. You didn't care about my fears. You didn't care about any of that. And I assumed that for a very long time, for years. And yeah, that was a wrong assumption. And I think that the thing that blocked me from even being able to acknowledge not just how it affected you but where your mind was i felt like my shit was too big and i was just dealing with it and it was in my face and i couldn't see anything past it it took me years to even acknowledge how much you had to sacrifice yeah. and how much you lost mm -hmm. when this thing happened to us collectively mm -hmm. i don't think i could assume positive intent i didn't know you enough i feel like positive intent needs some some meat on the bone yeah, it, it needs, needs something some to hold fuel. on to yeah mm -hmm. it needs mm -hmm. a foundation it does and, and it does. I don't know if you remember, I think Will Smith said this quote. I think it was about, oh, it was another older couple, man, a black older couple. And they asked, I maybe said this before in the sit down talk, so forgive me if I did. But they asked Will and Jada, like, you know, how long y'all been together? And they said, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And they asked the old couple, how long y'all been together? And they said, oh, like 50 years or something like that. And they said, don't worry. Y'all just don't know each other yet. Yeah. I'm like, I remember that. Man, I remember these people that. have been married for 20 some odd years. And you telling them they still don't know each other yet. Yeah. And then I got married. I was like, ah. Yeah. And we've been together for almost 10 years now. Is it 10? What year? It'll man. be 10 next year. It'll be 10 next year That's, together for 10 years. Yeah, man. This is my longest relationship. This is my longest relationship by far. Yeah. By far. And the thing is, it's not so much that you don't know the person in my mind. It's just that the person changes so yep. much. The person doesn't even know the person yet. Oh, they haven't nah. settled. They haven't really settled into who they are. Mm -mm. There are rituals and routines and like things that are consistent. But they're not fully there yet. Yeah. It's like when a butterfly come out the cocoon. The wings got to dry and solidify before yeah. they can fly away. But you can still get an idea of what it's going to look like. It's just not there yet. You can get a whiff and mm -hmm. either that whiff is going to get you closer to the top of the mountain or closer to the edge of the cliff. That's what makes relationships hard. You don't really know where it's going. So going back to the example then, like. At what point was it that you acknowledged that you were wrong in that assumption? Like, was there a moment that something happened? I like, think when we decided, damn, we veering now. I think when we decided to have Sydney. I can think, I share something about that? I think that? that's what changed. What's up? Do you know why, like, that was a monumental moment for me? Why, what was? Um, When we decided to have Sydney. 
I don't know that we've had this conversation like ever. Definitely not on the sit down talk. But do you know? Mm-mm. Um, I needed you to make that decision. I felt blamed for so many years. Like even after E was born, like I just felt not like directly, but just that tinge of like that's something that we haven't talked about, and that's a feeling that I felt like blame Mm -hmm. and I knew that having a second kid would be a lot that's why anytime we have that conversation I'm like babe like it's up to you you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and it's like I I knew I couldn't take feeling blamed again when I knew I had good intentions you know what I mean like I knew I couldn't deal with that I knew I wanted to expand our family yeah but it wasn't worth revisiting that pain point yeah just for the sake of having another kid like i needed to know that like we were good to go yeah and when we did decide we were and that was that was a happy moment because like i felt like i got the expansion of our family that you know i wanted but then like we were both excited about it and that's just something that we didn't experience the first time in the same way like of course there was a point where we were just like we're excited. Yeah, and it wasn't know? all bad. There were moments. Of course, this was just when we first found yeah, out. Like it, this it was the initial shock bad. of an unplanned pregnancy. But like there is a difference. There that is. initial moment. There, there is. And I think you were blamed. I think I did blame you. You did. I just don't want people to hear like I was blamed and and miss like the full breadth of why. Because I think that there are people who think that women trap them and 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 that's where basically where I'm going. <laughs> like yeah. I wanted to be clear that it's not a like, you trap me type of situation. Nah, nah, it was nah. just the timing was really and off. It was it was really the grieving of a life that on my side I feel life like I sweet. worked so hard to finally get back on track and then it got derailed. Mm-hmm. And then you know it's the crowd, you know, if you lay down you gotta take care yeah. of the responsibilities. We didn't we, expect it to happen we, like we that. We know and that's why we handled business the way that we did. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you can't feel the way that right. you feel. And what I was gonna say is I did blame you and I and I know I apologize for it a million times and I'll tell you now I'm still really sorry about that I I wish I wish I had the faculties to do that a different way I wish I was in a different place what's up Bianca (laughs) (laughs) never mind (laughs) y'all It's if, okay. <laughs> if you're watching the YouTube, I nanny just crept down real quick to get some melatonin for Emery, probably. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes I made was believing that because I didn't allow the blame to come out the way that it felt in my heart, that I was doing more than I actually was, making sure you didn't feel that at all. Because yeah. I'm like, man, this on a hundred. If you getting twenty five a day, consider nah, yourself I, lucky. I, I mean, felt not it. not saying that, but I yeah, I felt it, and I did consider myself lucky because I knew how you really felt, and I knew that you were walking on eggshells. But I still knew how you really felt, and it was a discussion that we could never have. So how how are you able to go from that? Like real talk, how are you able to go from unplanned pregnancy? This this man, I feel like this man hate me, y'all. You know, he blaming me for this thing. It's not feeling fair. It's not feeling right to assume in positive intent. What did you see in me that mm-hmm. gave you enough to say, all right, maybe we can make something work? One of the things that I'm really, really good at is putting myself in somebody else's situation and humanizing their feelings. Even though I felt blamed, I understood why you felt that way and why that was a block for you. Yeah. I understood why that was a block for you. Even though you, did you agree? Did you, like, outside of you understanding, were there any other conflicting feelings that went along with that? Yeah, I mean, the whole concept was conflicting because I felt the same way that you felt, but because of my life experiences, I had no other choice. Of course. I knew that you didn't have the same considerations that I had. My moment was about me and your moment was about you. While I think that, yeah, like it would have been helpful for us to have an honest conversation about it, but we didn't know each other that long. We didn't know each other that well. I didn't blame you. I understood, but I also felt like, let me just keep it a thousand. Like we were having a kid with each other. Like whether I thought you were justified in that feeling or not, I still had to co-parent with you. And I still had to come from a place of under like if I was gonna if I was gonna deal with you, that's something that I knew that I had to understood. Cause like I understood. 
I understood. I do feel like I had every right to respond in a way like it's not my fault. Like I had every right to do that. But like, I don't think that would have been the right way to handle that situation. Considering the fact that we were having this child, we decided that we were going to be together and we had to figure it out. Had we not, had we decided not to figure out our relationship, that wouldn't have been something that I felt like I had to do, you know, but I did feel like we would come around eventually. You know, I did feel like If we're establishing our relationship, our relationship now, like towards the end of the pregnancy was stronger than it had ever been. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were going through regular people trying to figure out how to live with each other, like drama. But there was at least something about our relationship that felt sustainable to where I felt like we can get there. But like it really just comes down to like I didn't disagree with how you felt. I felt the same exact way as you. And I didn't disagree with how you felt. Once the dust settled, I realized, and I think I was too mad to admit yeah, this to myself, yeah. but I knew it existed in my mind. If I was you, I wouldn't have done nothing yeah. different. I wouldn't have done nothing yeah. different. And I'm not sure if I wanted any of the alternatives. I think in the moment, you just, you scared, mm-hmm, man, and mm-hmm. you don't have what you need to make a good decision. This got deep, but in a good way. Yeah, I agree. We rabbit hole. Listen. It's really not, because some, we're giving practical examples. Like, we were talking around the issue for a minute, and now, like, I think people can relate. That's what it looked like sometimes. Mm-hmm. What I was going to say is on a sit-down talk, sometimes we're doing a podcast. Sometimes y'all just sitting through a check-in with me and my <laughs> wife. <laughs> that's basically what just happened. <laughs> we just, and we about to continue. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and let me just say, man, Emery... Like I know she's going to see this content mm-hmm. one day, and I'm fine with her seeing the content. Uh, I'm fine with her knowing how she started because that that little girl is the love of our life, man. The we, love of our life. She's the reason why you see us today in this way. Yeah, she, absolutely. She just, man, she. I'll get emotional if I talk about too. her too much, man. Yeah, she really changed our life in a really, really good way. Yeah at a really, really hard time for both of us. And she just continues to prove to be that person in our relationship moving forward. Amazing person. Like man. six years into parenting her, almost seven. And she still gives us that spark in our love and in our relationship the same way that she did when she announced her presence. <laughs> you know Yo, what I mean? Real and talk. like, she's just always been, she's just always been our guiding light in our relationship with ourselves which help us get Mm. to a place where Kira and I are in a place where we can give each other grace and do things like assume positive intent and like really do the work on our relationship because she is the representation of that in our lives she is she's the embodiment of that and I I love her I I can't I'm gonna cry if I talk about (laughs) her too much man that's his baby man that's my baby she (laughs) told me love in a completely different language yeah I feel like we sold that up man that that part of positive intent seeing that shit is hard and also like when you came into the relationship you came in with luggage that i ain't know nothing about and at the time you didn't really fully understand i thought i was over i thought i came to him more ahead than i thought i was i thought i was way more ahead like (laughs) even though i wasn't ready for the relationship like i knew how to be in a relationship i didn't know nothing man you I knew, knew a little bit. You knew a little bit. You knew more than me. But I didn't know as much as I thought I should know at that point. Yeah, I think you were blinded by your like your future was so bright. I don't think you were fully aware of how your past still has some strings on you. But you came into the relationship with your past. Yeah. I came with mine and it's hard to assume positive intent when positive intent wasn't something that was given to you yep. in a previous experience that's similar yep. to this. Or if assuming positive intent got you burnt in your relationship and the reason why that relationship don't work now. Like, <laughs> you can't I, give everybody your positive intent. Can I speak well, on that real quick? you can't assume positive intent out of everybody. You can't. You can't. And if you're with somebody who constantly disappoints you or who constantly proves to you that their intent isn't, positive i think we need to touch on that a little bit too Absolutely. because or the, how to see how to how to what what are the things to look out for and what are, what are the green flags and the red flags well i'll tell you this one thing that i assume when people have those behaviors if if it's if we're embarking on a romantic relationship and i feel like the things you do ain't good for me and you don't have positive intent i walk into this relationship knowing 
that if I choose you, there's a likelihood that that will never change. Mm. Am I okay with this relationship if that thing right there never changes? Because you know how you can talk yourself into, oh, it'll change. It'll be better. We love each other. The sun will come out tomorrow. And then you five, six, seven years in and that thing don't change. And you're waiting for something that's not likely to come to you. And then what happens is once you finally escape the grasp of that relationship, you start to do this thing we call over practicing mm -hmm. and some people call it overcompensating or overcorrection mm -hmm. overcorrection is if you miss a spot painting your nail and instead of just painting on one strip you paint your whole damn hand mm -hmm. so what'll happen is you've endured that behavior from that person for a long enough time to where you've built this muscle to say you know what i'm leaving i'm leaving that entire experience and i'm gonna never let anybody do that to me again mm -hmm. But you over practice it and you may become hyper vigilant. I think I mentioned this in the previous sit down talk where a person's not trying to do that thing to you again, but it mm -hmm. feels that way. So you hop into that mode mm -hmm. and it can really keep you away from a lot of potential love in your life, not just romantic, but friend love. Is that the recency bias that you were talking about? Is that similar to that? It feels no, like it to it's me. A, it's a different thing. Okay. It's a different thing because it doesn't have recency hinges on the order that things happen mm -hmm. and this is just like i have too many deposits of this thing in my bank um and i want to ensure that i never see it again so i'm gonna go far and beyond the call of duty to make that happen got it no that makes sense yeah man it's unfortunate so it's just to touch on that then like what are things that you saw in me green flags yeah like let's talk about that yeah that situation specifically outside of just the time i think you know I, mean? I think one green flag is the capacity for self-reflection even if the person can't admit that they're wrong in the moment they can move away from whatever point that they're trying to make far enough to see that their perspective isn't the only one i think that's huge if someone can be if someone can think about the way that they think even if it's not in the midst of argument mm -hmm. if if it comes back a day later a week later and say you know what i thought about what i said or i thought about what i did and now they have a different ideology or a different approach and i think that's very helpful yeah a capacity for self-reflection what you think is one um, I think is um just somebody's ability. It's kind of in line with that, but somebody's ability to listen without getting defensive. Mm -hmm. I think that in this particular situation, I didn't use the opportunities where you were kind of telling me how you felt to also justify how I felt. I listened. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's a huge one right like, there. In this particular situation, I also had a right to say, hey, me too. I feel this way too. It's not just you. You know what I mean? I could, I would have been within my right to do that. Mm -hmm. But that is a defensive move. That's a move to justify my feelings as opposed to affirming his feelings and saying like, by the way, I'm here to listen. You that's know, whether, one. yeah, I mean, and I think that's something that we both do. I got one. Mm -hmm. It's in line with the whole self-reflective thing. I think the ability for somebody to realize that there's a different way to approach this conflict in the moment, even if they are stuck on their way, just the ability to recognize maybe there's a different way to find a solution here. I think that's a huge green flag mm -hmm. because it, it demonstrates flexibility to yeah. me. And flexibility is a key component to any successful relationship. I think just it's kind of veering off a bit but i think it's worth it to say like i think being solution oriented is definitely very hard in relationships in general it's hard, period but i think in this particular situation is beneficial because it's like we are focusing on solving the problem not making me look better or getting you to admit something bad Ooh, you know what i mean you just made me think of another one but, i finish your point yeah and i just think that like it's okay to be solution oriented when you're finding solution to problems that have existed in your relationship for a long time. There's a time and place to emotionally vent, but there should also be a time and place for you to solve the issues. It's not just about venting. It's not just about getting shit off your chest. It's not just about having the other person understand what they did to you and how they hurt you. It's also understanding that you've made the decision that you want to move forward in this relationship with that person and you have to give them that chance. You can't have it both ways. You can't make the person feel bad, but then expect them to, to uh, uh, and then want to stay in a healthy relationship. Yeah, that's tough. 
it's tough. And like, we'll talk about more of the green flags as we go, but, but like the purpose of having a healthy relationship is to have a healthy relationship. It's not to have the perfect relationship. Yeah. It's not to have That's the fairy so simple, tale. But so profound. Yeah, I but I mean, healthy means disagreements. Healthy means, you know what I mean, not saying things right every every time. For sure. Healthy means like going through some type of turmoil. Like every we are humans and we do shit and we go through shit. So it's just like it's the work that makes it healthy and it's the work that makes it suck sometimes but like that's the po- if the point is to be in a healthy relationship you gotta do the work if you want a fairy tale then go be a sugar baby or something yeah. like <laughs> sugar baby is or, you know wild. i mean but like you don't have you don't have to deal with the ins and outs of the relationship in that same way that's yeah. what you want i mean that's cool like that is cool for some people but we're not in that kind of relationship. Nah, and I think it's it's also what you used to, what you've seen growing up. There's so many things that play a factor here. I thought of another green flag mm-hmm. when you were talking. I think a person's ability to back off of their point without feeling like they losing power yeah. is a huge green flag. I mean, even growing up, a lot of our parents, you know, they'll they'll say something and they'll be dead wrong. Double but down on it. They double down on it mm-hmm. because to admit to your child who is your subordinate that who is not your equal that you were wrong, you lose power or leverage. And that's a human thing. People feel like just to admit that there may be a, a crack in their armor, man. There may be a flaw in their logic mm-hmm. makes you feel like you're losing power. If you could say I may be wrong, but you know that your toes are planted firmly still on the ground. I think that's a huge green flag, man. Yeah. That that means that we can we got something to work with. You're not going to argue with me for the sake of arguing mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. At some point, you're going to try to help me. Or at some point you're gonna try to work with me to figure this thing out. Yeah, I don't want to argue with you. I'm arguing with everybody in the world. I don't want to argue with you. I'm <laughs> I mean, happy. I, I think those are like really, really good, like green flags. Like I feel like it really just boils down to like trust, communication, and grace. Because shit's not always gonna look sweet. Your partner's gonna say something, do something. You're gonna be like, for real. <laughs> but, happens all the time but yeah trust communication and grace like i just feel like those are the fundamental tenets that we at least like showcase in our relationship and if you were to look at all of the the arguments and the just the issues that we've talked about on the sit down talk it always came down to those three things being the things that kind of got us through you also got to remember even when you're the person who's upset like your approach matters. Your approach matters. <laughs> People not feeling blamed and accused matters. Yes, it does. When you come in with blaming and accusing or accusatory language, mm-hmm. it's very, even when you're not that person anymore, you'll find that it's very hard for people to see you as anything but a blamer or an accuser. Mm-hmm. Definitely transitions into your relationship. So I know the language seems kind of soft sometimes when, when you start a sentence with, like, babe, I'm upset. But I'm not mad at you. And here's the thing that I'm upset about. Mm -hmm. But what some people do is they fly in with, this is what you just did to piss me off. This is what you just did to upset me. And once you hear that you part, it's hard to hear anything else around that. So what I would do is if I come in, if something really bothered me that Noemi did, I think while assuming positive intent, the first thing I'll do is just try to figure out what she's saying past how what she said made me feel mm-hmm. but like what is the issue here the the second thing i do is try not to try to figure it out or understand it or oh i'm right there with you nah i'm probably not going to agree with you mm-hmm. but i don't need to agree with you i just need to understand what's going on with you mm-hmm. and i think the third thing is have a conversation about it not always solution oriented but just ask questions Mm -hmm. and and the questions I ask is this something that just happened or is this based off of something that happened before Mm -hmm. because her brain compartmentalizes shit differently than mine with me it could be a hundred little different things and they don't really touch or intersect each other with her it's like nah that same space is one big efficiency apartment and all that shit has something to do with something else I will never see the world the way she does but if I waited to see the world the way that she does to help work through a solution man some of the problems that stemmed from 10 years ago would still be as big if not bigger 
today and i don't want that man i want peace not problems always <laughs> i don't i don't want that yeah and here it's called assume positive intent not assume where the other person is coming from no. you know what i mean i think we do especially you. in like arguments we spend a little bit too much time trying to find connections where connections don't exist because it's not our emotion so for Kier to come to me telling me about how he feels or doing something, I think we give too much credit in connecting your partner's actions with your feelings all the time. I just don't think it always <laughs> is connected. Like I, I don't have to assume what your mind told you to do when you said that. I just have to assume that you didn't mean to hurt me, but this shit kind of hurt. Yeah, there's a difference between something that's meant to hurt you and something that hurts you but it wasn't mm -hmm. intended to do that mm -hmm. you know those two things are two totally different and i feel like the best thing to do in that situation or something that i do that has been like highly effective for me emotionally is like that made me feel kind of you know whatever like, like do you say it in a moment or do you sit on it for a little bit i say it in well it depends it depends on how strong i feel if it's something that just kind of hurt a little bit I'll say it in the moment because I know it's something that I can emotionally handle because it's not something that bothered me that much. If it's something that bothered me a lot now, I have to sit and think about it because that means I was triggered and I have to figure out what I was triggered by because that most likely is the reason why I'm upset versus what it is that you said. It's kind of like Kier used this example in one of his speeches years ago and it was about um, a pebble in your shoe. Oh, yeah. And it's like you feel it and it's kind of uncomfortable, but after a while you kind of get used to it. But what you don't realize is the effect of it on your back. You know what I mean? And like, you don't address it. It's not something that's at the top of your mind, but it's something that is affecting you and it's affecting you worse and worse the longer it goes unaddressed. Mm -hmm. And then that's why people implode. I mean, I mean, that's at least why I implode is because it's those small things that I don't necessarily address in the moment. And like he said, my brain is like a efficiency apartment. Now that pebble is connected to everything. It's connected to the argument that we just had this morning. And it's not actually. But because I didn't address it, it's now intertwined with dog some of the big baby. stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I, I was a heavy dog baller. The minute I had the opportunity to lay out my grievances, they all came out, yeah. you know? And I just, I'm now... Not, I'm, I'm no different. I'm no different. Yeah, we just like, maybe we just respond to things differently. Cause you implode, I explode. Yeah, I implode. I implode, you explode. Yeah, I wish I I wish I could explode. Like I, I wish, wish I, I could, could not. Implode. Nah, cause you hold too much in, yo. Like, I can't. Like I can't even in. cry. Like it's so hard for me to like externally express my feelings because I'm so used to holding them inside. Yeah, I still don't know how. Your brain is. I'm just better at talking it. about. It. That's the thing. Yeah. Like I can say like, like even today. Today was a tough day for me, and I remember saying multiple times like, I, if I could, I would cry right now. Like, it was a moment that I felt like crying about. Even right now, I still feel like crying about. I'm just not a crier. Like, my body just, it doesn't do those things. But it doesn't mean I don't feel it. I just process it differently. I wish I could outwardly process my emotions better. I just, I try. I, I just can't fake it. My brain doesn't work that way. My I brain, think that's a gift and a curse. It's definitely a gift and a I under I, I definitely acknowledge the positive in that. But it just sucks when you're on a mental health journey and you're in consistent therapy and you're talking about your feelings and like the only thing you can do is write about them because you can't out. That's the only way that you can outwardly express them. Yeah, that's why some people use music or movies to process yeah. their feelings. We had this man. We really strained, but you know how find, the young you find know, an outlet. You know how the young dudes be having their phone blaring. They don't got no like. If you catch public transportation. And you in the city, you gonna find a young dude on the <laughs> bus or something one. listening to NBA Young Boy or something, and it's gonna be loud, and he gonna no 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 no, and then I'm gonna kill him and no 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 no, no crying these tears on my life, listen to Rod Wave or something like that. And there are a lot of studies that a lot of young men process their feelings through music. Mm -hmm. That's true. People mm -hmm. got to listen to a song to cry, listen to a song to, to really capture the emotion you're feeling. Are we landing this plane? Yeah, we got to we gotta do one last thing before we land. I think we did a really good job at <laughs> recognizing. What? Landing this plane is corporate talk. I mean, we've said it multiple times. At the Are end we of landing this plane? <laughs> um, we have to land the plane. 
if you're an OG uh, listener or watcher, uh, let me know which episode it is that we we had a whole conversation about landing this plane. Like that was like a thing that we said often, and I thought it was so cool back then. Now I think it's just corny I AF. Know, I know. But anyway, before we land this plane or end this conversation, um, what I was about to say is I think we did a really good job at identifying like green flags. You can look online enough for the red flags. Oh, like, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Negativity bias. You they're have, you they're don't have definitely to, everywhere. You had to go far. Nah, and it's like remember our intention is always to share the real but to also give practical tips so in the spirit of that i also want to talk a little bit about like things that we can do to get us to a place where we can assume positive Look intent. The transition. It, it was good i did it <laughs> you know something that you can do to get you to a place where you can assume positive intent I've talked about this before in a sit down talk. Maybe, I don't know, but we're going to revisit it. We just kind of went on a tangent. Yeah, we kind of went on a tangent about this, but I do struggle with like outwardly expressing my emotions and writing is something that I do. So when I'm in a situation where I'm struggling to assume positive intent or something just feels kind of funny and I know I have to have that conversation in order to move forward, I write down how I feel in the moment. Usually in those moments where I said, it's not those little pebble moments, it's the big moments where I need a second. I go ahead and write down how I feel, even in anger. I'd write exactly how I feel. I write the assumptions that I, the negative assumptions that I do have. You know, I just kind of air it out and vent. And then I sit on it for a bit, maybe, maybe a couple minutes, maybe a couple days. It just kind of depends on where I'm at. I go back and I reread it and I start to delete the things that I started to say out of anger because now that it's been a couple of days or a couple of minutes, whatever, now that I've had some time to mm-hmm. think about it, I can take out the anger and try to get to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. Once I get to the root of the problem, my next deciding thing is, is it care or is it something else? And if it's something else, I still address it with you, but it's a different way. Instead of saying, hey, babe, yesterday you said X, Y, and Z, I say, hey, babe, this thing from my past is really bothering me. Can I talk to you about it? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have to bring up what you did because Mm -hmm. it wasn't about you, but it was clearly about Mm -hmm. the issue. Knowing when it's a you thing. Yes. That's insane work. It's, but it starts with doing the work yourself. A lot of people want to fix their relationships, but don't realize that they have to work on themselves first. Oh, that's the whole, that's (laughs) absolutely. And couples counseling, one of the first things I tell people is y'all both need to be in individual therapy for this to be the most effective that it can be. Yeah, and I think you're right. Um, And then the second thing I was about to say was, when it's not, when it is about you, how do I address it? When it is about you, that's when I find an opportune moment. <laughs> like for you, where we're sitting, where we're talking about something, where we're no longer arguing, where I can say like, hey, babe, I kind of want to talk to you about something. Mm-hmm. Do you have a minute or you want to talk about it later? Mm-hmm. I think in the history of our relationship, we're at a place where we don't really go off on each other. You know what I mean? So it's not like a, do you want me to yell at you now? Or do you want to, you want me to yell at you later? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more of a, do you have an emotion? Do you have the emotional capacity to have this conversation with me right now? And if you don't right now, there's a conversation that I do want to have. So can you let me know when you have the capacity for it? Mm. I do that with you. Granted, you, it doesn't look exactly like that, but I'm trying to break it down for y'all so that you can find a way to make it your own. It makes it an easier conversation to have because I think over time I developed a thicker skin. So, because sometimes I am the problem. It is me. <laughs> and there are times where I appreciate the directness. I'd rather know something uncomfortable now than you sit on something because you believe that. You know, you have to come at me in a perfect way or there's some statue of limitations uh, yeah. in our relationship where after a certain amount of time, you're not allowed to talk about something that bothered you mm-hmm. in the past. Uh, I think that's a ridiculous stipulation in a relationship. I agree. Um, but also, if something happened three years ago, and you never said anything about it. I think you need to keep it in your mind that even though you're coming in hot because you're still angry about this thing, this is something that the other person hasn't thought about in three years. Mm-hmm. Not saying it's not valid what you think, feel, mm-hmm. and believe. Just saying that you have to approach it like you got a three-year-old plate of food that you're presenting to everyone and not you know something that's hot fresh. and fresh off yeah. the bar like it is in your mind. Yeah. Um, but make sure the person that you're having that conversation with has those green flags that we talked about before. Because in those situations, it's easier for you to give grace. 
Oh, yeah, as no being that person, like it's all intertwined. I just don't want people to take this advice and write that, write it down on oh, the list will. and do it. Yeah, they're going. <laughs> so to, I'm going to tell you that will not work. That ain't going to help you. That's not going to work. Okay, they're going to do it anyway. You're going to do one thing. You got to do all the things. That's how this works. Listen, hey. <laughs> we'll find a way to compile it, making a list, making it organized for you. But trust and believe, like it's it's a whole cycle to this. Nah, you right, and and you said something earlier that just plays through. Uh, place true throughout this entire conversation it, it starts with you i think it's important to know when the emotional baggage on the carousel is yours mm. you know and own that thing without unfairly guilting yourself or torturing yourself with self-shame and, and just acknowledging that those things exist without you know making sure you you cover your whole body in them we gotta land this plane. You have to give is your it anything, practical advice. Oh, my practical advice on what again? On how we can so learn late. to assume <laughs> positive intent. Oh yeah, how we can. You learn. said you had something in mind. Did you forget it? Yeah, man. <laughs> your 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 point started getting good, and I, I started I stopped paying attention to my own thoughts. Let me help you get it. And if you can't get it in the next ten seconds, then it is what it is. Come on. I know that my strategy is very analytical because that's how my brain works. You're a little bit more direct. It may not involve writing down it may not involve this oh kind yeah, of yeah, yeah i got mine i got mine i, knew, I got mine I knew that would help. so so mine isn't writing it down um that that's never gonna work for me i'm, I'm never gonna be the guy with a gratitude journal i'm i'm just not gonna do but if it you are it's okay oh nah shout out to folks <laughs> that use gratitude journals i wish i could mm -hmm. i'm just that's not how my brain be best processes these things i think for me i need to take a walk and I need to talk to myself. Mm -hmm. I need to hear the thoughts that I think audibly. I need to hear my mouth say them. I need to make these words real. And then once I say them, I need to find the parts that feel wildly irrational. <laughs> and I know that uh, mostly emotionally charged. And I ask myself, like, what other shit is this connected to? What am I tripping off of right now? Am I using this one thing that I'm upset about as a gateway to be upset about everything that's unfair in my life? My brain loves doing that. Yeah. My yeah. brain loves that. And then yeah. I can't stop my mind from doing that. But what I can do is I can slow it down and I can make sure that it doesn't bleed into other things. So my idea of giving grace is if I'm arguing and I'm, and I'm arguing myself, I'm bringing up unrelated stuff and stuff from the past. I just I stop that right then and there. I ask myself if that's helpful. Sometimes it's not helpful and I stop and I try to think more constructively. Sometimes, yeah, I need to get this off. I'm mad about it because I'm uncomfortable with the feeling or because I feel it's a stupid thing to think that doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve any space. So I put it out there. And it's it's really about me just having the opportunity to vent and say it out loud and say the irrational part and not make myself feel bad about it. And then work back from there and try to find a solution. How do I make myself feel better? How do I help resolve this thing and help you feel better? Is it my job to help you feel better in this instance? Do I need to constructively talk through it with you? Or do I need to just sit back and let you talk and let you cook? I mean, it's a million variables, but I can't figure out what to do if I'm feeling blame or if I'm feeling angry or if I'm too hot about it that the only thing I see is red. So I got I got to calm down first. And my second thing is understanding the way that my brain works one thing when you're with your partner even if it's not a competition they can make you realize your partner's going to do some things very well that you don't do very well you're like damn is my brain broken <laughs> no amy she knows how she feels very quickly if something happens she can make a very quick determination whether or not she's offended and that's her brain she don't put no pressure on me me if you say something wild to me it may take me a week to be like hold on wait a minute <laughs> my brain just we all got thinking and learning differences yeah, so yeah. my brain processes those things more slowly i gotta also give myself grace man hey bro you you feel slowly you got big feelings you need some time mm -hmm. but and i pressure space. myself in some mm -hmm. space but i pressure myself to figure it out because i figure it because out you so figure out like, so, oh, shit i need to figure it out in a moment no 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 Nah, you got to do the thing that makes your brain function its best. You just got to make sure you're talking so it's not why you're working through your brain stuff and it takes you a month. Your partner out in the cold, they don't know what the hell going on with you. So sometimes it's a check-in like, hey, babe, I'm still upset about the thing yeah. that happened, but I'm working through it in my mind. 
I don't got to tell her everything, but just tell her, like, hey, I'm thinking about this thing. I'm not bullshitting. I'm not sweeping stuff up under the rug. I'm still willing to, to, to help figure this thing out, but, you know, I need a second. Can I give you your flowers really quick? I know I always do it. <laughs> give me my flowers. So um, you processing things slowly mm -hmm. and having, like, big feelings was the inspiration for me to write how I feel. How because so? I I am somebody that... I think in most situations, I can easily identify how I feel in the majority of the situations, but that's just how I feel in the moment. I can't always identify how I feel for real once the moment has passed. Uh, I see what and you're doing. yeah, I, that's why I write things out because like, yeah, I was offended. I'm a lawyer. I know how to like, I didn't like that. Let me bring, bring up all the things that you did and why you're wrong. And I think that I can easily identify that I was offended by this and that isn't true because X, Y, and Z. What I can't see is, yes, I was offended by this, but that wasn't his intent intention. So now I'm fighting a battle that he doesn't even know that exists. And I got all my guns and all my army ready to blast them. And I'm over here like Lottie died. Yeah, and you're just like, whoa, where where are the guns come from, guys? Yeah. What's going on? You yeah. know, and I just like that wasn't conducive to the health of our relationship. And I wasn't doing it because it was like, wow, like Kira's just so understanding and blah, blah, blah. It was more of a I admired and was scared of the way that you will come back to an argument that happened a week ago and still be upset and say how you feel and for me like the moment was fleeting the moment is gone like, and now i feel uncomfortable and now i'm just like well i didn't even take my emotions that far to understand why i was uncomfortable so now i feel like i have a great understanding of how you feel and not only do you not have an understanding of how i feel i don't really understand how i feel anymore. oh my god yeah it, it just opened a lot of doors for me to learn how to slow down the slowing down, yeah. It's hard for me. You yeah. know, how I'm, yeah. I'm always wired. Like, I got 15 business plans being populated in my brain as we speak right now. Slow it down, child. Like, for real. Slow and it's it just, down. I'm just, I'm so analytical. And it it is so exciting and driving to me, but it loses the connection to the moment. I also want to leave this message for the people that are watching this because they found a relationship where they feel like it is worth the investment or they're in a relationship right now where they just feel like they need additional tools to their toolbox. Because I think a lot of people speak enough about relationships that we shouldn't be in and we don't celebrate enough the relationships where we're still currently doing the work. Mm -hmm. Like it always has to be bad and I need to get out or relationship goals for the every the people in between. I want you to take the tips from this like episode to kind of give you the check marks that you see in your partner. Because if you're here and you're in a relationship or if you're here and you're with your partner watching this, that means that you have enough of those green flags yeah. and enough of those tools in your toolbox where this is just enhancing a relationship that's already working that just needs a couple of extra things. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that we are leaving room for those people. No doubt. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I absolutely look out for the red flags. But don't create red flags where there aren't. Look for the green in your partner. And if you have enough, that is worth the investment. This is the investment. So I just want to make sure that we, like, leave room for, like, those people in between those two scenarios. Yeah. It, it, relationships, I'll close with this. Relationships are really polarizing when we see them on screens or on pages because they're either, like, the worst examples or just irrationally the best examples you know all the prim proper beautiful kids and the big house and the, like most people don't have all that and we say this on when we do live events all the time most healthy relationships are pretty boring and mm -hmm. uneventful <laughs> like they kind of mid this is you're not going to get into an exciting argument you're not going to you know there's nothing thrilling about there's it there's no it's, tea there <laughs> yeah it's just the functional relationship mm -hmm. and you can easily self-sabotage when that's not what you're used to. Mm -hmm. um, and that is representative of what a lot of different people go through. But 
that's just our point of view. We want to know what y'all think and what y'all are going through out there. At the bottom of the comment section below, tell me what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. What aha moment did you stumble upon? What did you hear that was brand new? And what did you hear that reaffirmed something that you already knew, but you just needed to get it again? Make sure that you hit the notification button so that you can know of all of our posts as soon as they post. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's very important. That's how we know you here for real, for real. Um, it's late. It's late, late. It's late. I got the smooth jazz voice going on. <sighs> Ladies, I am taken. I understand <laughs> the voice is captivating. And the haircut and the chocolate. Is I, I get it. I get it. Oh, oh, but yes. but I belong to this thing right here. Right here. We about to go upstairs and watch some Netflix and snuggle on the couch until we fall asleep. Mm. Until next time, y'all take care. Be well. What if I never hit record?